And joining me now from London is Natia Seskuria from the Royal United Services Institute. Uh, Natia, thanks for your time. Given all of the constraints, does NATO have any chance of stopping Vladimir Putin? Thank you for having me. Um, as uh, the previous guest has discussed, NATO has uh, clearly some limitations. And NATO is willing to provide weapons to Ukraine, but it seems like what Vladimir, Vladimir Zelensky has been asking for many days, um, uh, the known fly zone over Ukraine, it seems like uh, this option is out of the table. NATO cannot impose a no-fly zone. So physically, how much can this alliance do, particularly as the situation continues to deteriorate? Yes, um, uh, NATO, NATO allies have been consistent in terms of supporting Ukraine. Um, a number of NATO allies are sending weapons to Ukraine. And we have seen that the West has been more united than before. Germany, for example, um, uh, has halted the Nord Stream 2 pipeline and decided to send weapons to Ukraine, breaking its long-standing post-war policy of not sending weapons to the conflict zones. Uh, German Chancellor has also made a new commitment to spend more than 2% on defense. So there is a change and there is a shift in Western stance and Western policies towards this um, uh, bloody uh, war that Russia is waging in Ukraine. However, uh, there are certain limitations because Ukraine is not a member of NATO. And uh, the, the Jan Stoltenberg has made it clear that NATO will be willing to uh, provide military aid and support. However, uh, the boots on the ground is, um, uh, is not an option. But it's putting NATO in an invidious position, isn't it? Indeed, because we have seen that uh, Russia is uh, not not going to stop um, in Ukraine, and Russia has uh, a very ambitious plan to fully digest Ukrainian sovereignty. And there is no indication that this um, uh, military offensive will stop anytime soon. Um, it's, negotiations continue, but despite the fact that these talks are taking place between Ukraine and Russia, there is no indication that uh, Russia will change its uncompromised demands. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov declared that Russia insists that any peace agreement with Ukraine must include uh, the demilitarization of Ukraine. And the Russian side wants Ukraine to adopt neutral status, which will make Ukraine a non-aligned country militarily, hence forcing Ukraine to abandon its uh, ambitions to join NATO. Unfortunately, back in 2008, when um, when Georgia and Ukraine uh, were waiting for a membership action plan, this decision hasn't been made then. And uh, hence, Ukraine is, um, uh, does not have full support from NATO in terms of, uh, from military perspective. And by this, I mean uh, the boots on the ground. Is it right in saying that nobody is in a position to predict what Vladimir Putin will do next? It is hard to predict uh, Vladimir Putin's uh, uh, thought process and his decision making because I think uh, even from his perspective, this war is absolutely irrational war. And uh, I think uh, the consequences of this war, no matter how it, how it ends, uh, will backfire for Putin. And we see that sanctions are already in place and these sanctions are damaging the uh, life of Russian citizens of Russians starting from the oligarchs to ordinary people. So I think uh, he has clearly miscalculated here. And uh, by this, I mean that uh, the uh, consequences of these sanctions are, of course, long term. And uh, I think um, uh, very tough times are ahead for Russia as well, uh, as well as for Ukraine, because we see that uh, the uh, war is, uh, the, the, the Russians are shelling Ukrainian cities, the Russians are killing Ukrainian people, and uh, there are dire consequences already. Nadia um, Siskiria, thank you so much. Thank you.